you guys are you do monitor the health of these uh, these areas and uh, uh, talk a little bit about what you know uh, the net setting the the water quality pulling the nets looking at species that type of thing Kevin yeah you're right we um we're fortunate that we stock 60 65 ponds in addition to what the government stocks which provides us the opportunity to you know be a little closer and a little more intimate with those ponds than if we had 300 lakes we stock so as an ongoing part of our evaluation we we do monitor various aspects of the fishery that includes angling effort so how many people are fishing what the hours of fishing are um, water quality whether that's summer and winter dissolved oxygen and water temperature, um, post docking assessment of the fish. In some cases, we we want to look at how successful we were at creating a fishery after stocking, whether it's uh, the trout um, or when we stock the perch, we'll be doing that too. So, so all that comes down to us having various field activities. And some of that involves setting nets to catch the fish to then assess um, how successful stocking was how many fish we capture, the size of the fish, these sorts of things. <clears throat> um, and we have been moving towards live capture techniques because we don't want to, many of the fisheries assessments use gill nets. Problem with that is we'd be able to say we had a number of fish and we don't want to kill those fish. We want to capture them live so that the anglers can then uh, benefit from that. So we've been going to uh, a trap net or a fike net, which the fish swim into, we can we can remove the fish, measure them, weigh them, tag them if that's part of the study, and then release them back into the water body. What's the procedure when you discover a species of fish that A, you weren't, you you didn't plant uh, or didn't put into that lake, but it 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 surfaced and, and is in that lake, maybe competing against the uh, uh the fish that you did put into that lake. I'm talking specifically about uh pike or or other uh, species that weren't part of the plan kevin and, and i guess talk to it about from the perspective of the angler should the you know can the angler keep that fish is that part of the five is it something different um just give us sort of your overview of that yeah and in you're right in many cases our ponds do have connectivity to, um, to other water bodies where fish can come in it's also uh, been known to happen that, that people will um, illegally put other species in a pond with, you know, obviously often with the best intentions of creating a fishery, uh, but that can have unintended consequences. When, when we do discover these, these species in our pond that are not the ones we have stocked or that are maybe unintentional, uh, our approach is to work with our AEP counterparts to then, you know, if it's if it's one fish or if it's you know a handful or a population of fish, to work with them to come to a, um, a conclusion on what we wanna do. If we want to move towards maybe more active management of that or, or leaving them in the water body. Uh, in the case of the angler, um, the best recommendation is to you know, adhere to the Alberta angling regulations of what is allowed and what isn't allowed. And, and I believe in most cases that if you do catch, uh, if there's a pike or a perch in these stock trout ponds that it is allowed to harvest those to try and remove them from from the water body that's intended to be a trout but but again i would say that following the current angling regulations for each pond because it can change and it can be pond specific is the best uh, the best recommendation talk a little bit uh... There is a finite, you, you mentioned this off the top, there's a finite number of, of lakes and ponds that are suitable for, for stocking. Are we getting to a point, Kevin, where uh, maybe we look at more man-made uh, ponds or, or lakes that, that could be turned over and, and used as fishing op opportunities? No, and that's, that's a very uh, good point is that we, <clears throat> we, any water body in the province that's really a gem that is deserving stocking, they're they're generally stocked. Um, there's not a lot of water bodies out there that are that are not stocked that could be. But we we do want to work closely with entities like Alberta Transportation when there's if there's excavation for you know for road construction, oftentimes they they construct the borrow pits for for clay for building materials. And, and we'd like to work more closely with these entities to not only produce a fishery, but produce one that has desirable characteristics. So uh, a square dugout is less desirable than 
a water body with some some structure, some depth, you know, some islands, some variation in depth and, and habitat. Um, so we can work closely with that. We're, we're also interested in working closely with, with the public if there's water bodies that they may have that could come online through a, a, you know, a donation, an eco gift. We've done that in the past. Our new water body we brought online this year, Boulder Lake, came to us through an eco gift and uh, it, it was a former gravel pit. So those are very pertinent ways that we can obtain new water bodies for the, the program. The management of these lakes and ponds by the Alberta Conservation Association and their various partners has not gone unnoticed. We, we love fishing for trout. That, that's kind of like our game is, is the trout fishing. And uh, we just find them a little bit smarter than the other ones. And it's a little bit more challenging for us, and, uh, which makes them more interesting. And, uh, and a matter of fact, eating trout is, is very, very good eating fish. So we just, all the way around, trout has been kind of our, our lives. I uh, used to fish for pike when I was younger in the North Saskatchewan River. And uh, we really enjoyed that. But uh, the older you get, it seems like you kind of want to sit with a fishing rod and a bell on top. <laughs> and it's like a lot more relaxing, you know, the older you get. In fact, at least with this angling group, they would like to see even more fishing opportunities. Around the Edmonton area, it seems like we don't have enough spots where we can go out there and, and really catch, I'm not saying 10 fish, but at least, you know, you catch three or four when you come out. We, we just, that sort of thing. And even if we didn't catch anything, we would still be kind of happy just being outdoors. But we feel there should be more resources put into the stocking of, uh, of trout especially.